Hello there and welcome back everyone. My name is Dr. Anthony Cliff and as part of our data analysis series, today we're going to talk about the Friedman's test. So you might have gone through your data so far and you realise that you have data from different time points or potentially before an intervention and after an intervention. So for example, you might have um, patients and you were looking at before uh, they had an operation during it and then afterwards to see what their pain scores were like. You might well um, be looking at um, test scores. So before, uh, as an example, a spelling test, um, before they were taught something, during a two week program, and then afterwards, all those different types of things. When you're looking at timescales and points between a select group, that's when you want to use a Friedman's test, especially when your data is not normal. Now, if you're not unsure, if you're unsure what is normal and what is not normal, then please do see the videos and the links and descriptions below. So we'll crack on then with a Friedman's test. So a Friedman's test is the non-parametric alternative to the one-way repeated measures ANOVA test. So if you do have normal data and you have parametric data, then you're going to use an ANOVA, but typically if you're using questionnaires, it's unlikely that you're going to find that you have that um, normal distributed data. You'll have non-normal data, so you'll use a Friedman's test. So we use this to determine whether there's any statistical significant differences between the distributions of three or more related groups. The groups are related as they contain the same cases, for example, the same participants, in each group, and each group represents a repeated measure on the same dependent variable. So as I mentioned before, you have the same group that are tested at three different time points, and that's what you'd use a Friedman's test for. So like all tests so far, if you followed me through all the videos, there are assumptions. So it assumes that you have one dependent variable that is measured at the continuous or ordinal level. So again, this could be pain score, this could be test scores, this could be um, on, on a scale of um, not agree to fully agree. That's what it assumes that you have. And it assumes that your independent variable consists of three or more catalogical, related or matched cases. So again, what that means is if you have three different time points, that they're the same participants in each one of those. So if you had a time point A, they're the same as in time point B and the same in time point C. So let's head over now into SPSS and I'll show you a very easy way to do this. OK, so we're back in uh, SPSS now. Now, the one I'm going to focus on today is quite topical. It was um, a survey given out to people uh, during lockdown. Um, sorry, before lockdown during lockdown and after lockdown to see what their environmental scores were. So on a scale of one to 10, how environmentally friendly they thought that they were, with one being uh, not very friendly uh, and 10 being incredibly friendly. So we're gonna compare um, the UK population here between those three different time points. So first thing you need to make sure is whatever your um, score is that you're looking at, that that's changed the scale. So for example, here I have my pre-lockdown environmentally friendly score, my during and my post, and that's changed the scale. If you don't know how to do that, go to your measure column, click on it, and then make sure it's scale. Now we go to analyze, we go to non-parametric tests, and then we go down to related samples. Click on that. First thing you'll see here is the objectives field. Make sure the automatically compare observed data to hypothesized is selected. Then you want to go into fields and you'll have it blank on the right hand side. You want to scroll down here in the fields on the left hand side to find where your scores are. Press the first one, hold control. Click the next one and the next one, so all three of them are highlighted, or how many that you have. Pop that over into your test field box, and then simply click Run. It's as simple as that. So SPSS will do its magic. And here we go, so it's telling me to reject null hypothesis. So 
Again, if you don't know what the hypotheses are in the null hypothesis, please see the videos below. But for example, here, the null hypothesis is, is there is no change or significant difference in the scores before lockdown, during lockdown and after lockdown in terms of how environmentally friendly um, the UK population felt that they were. So this Friedman's test is telling us to reject that null hypothesis. So there is a difference between those scores. Um, however, we don't know whereabouts those differences lie. So frankly, for us in SPSS 26, a post hoc test is done for us. But if you're unsure here um, why this is significant and why it's not, so it's telling us to reject it because our significance level here in our column here and here in this asymptotic two-sided is less than 0 0.05. So if you follow the video so far, you know that that's our key number. Anything less than 0 0.05, so 0 0.499 is significant. And obviously the closer you are to uh, zero, means you have a bit more of a stronger correlation between that. So SPSS is telling us here to reject that null hypothesis. So we know that there is a difference between those environmental scores, but we don't know in what way. Have they increased? Have they decreased? Um, is it just between um, before and after, or is it during and after? We need to find that out. So as we scroll down here in SPSS 26, very handily, our um, SPSS gives us this post hoc test called a pairwise comparison. So if you look here, we know that closer to zero or the smaller the score means that they are less environmentally friendly. So when we look here, we have a pre-lockdown environmental score of a mean rank of 1.57. During lockdown, that rose to 2.30, so they got more environmentally friendly. And then post lockdown, that dropped to 2.15, but it's still more than 1.57. So looking at this, having a guess before we get down to our pairwise comparison, I know that this population that I studied had got more environmentally friendly after lockdown to compared to before lockdown. But let's see if that's true or not. So down here, if you've ever done a Kruskal Wallace test, again, have a look at those videos, very similar. A pairwise comparison is done. So what do we do with a pairwise comparison? So you have this table here. And what this is, what this is telling us is we have to always look at the adjusted significance. So I mentioned this in the Kruskal Wallace test, all of our Bonferroni correction. Always look at the adjusted significance. So we can see here along the bottom, a post lockdown score and during lockdown, it's over 0 0.05. So there's no significant difference between these two here. And that kind of makes sense. We've got 2.30 and 2.15. They're very, very similar. However, as we go across here to our adjusted significance, that's telling us pre lockdown environmental score is statistically significantly different than the post lockdown. And again, that makes sense. We've got almost, um, you know, almost a whole one percentage shift there. We've got 1.54 to 2.15. And it's also telling us that during lockdown, they were statistically significantly more environmentally friendly than they were before lockdown happened. So we know that, and that's now in a nice um, graphical representation. So if you are familiar with pairwise, basically anything in blue, the blue lines mean there is a statistical significant difference between those two categories. If there's red, it means that there isn't. So again, from um, uh, the way the scores were done, I know that the lower the score, the less environmentally friendly they were. So if I look here, pre-lockdown, they were at 1.54 and then post lockdown they've jumped to 2.15 so they've got more environmentally friendly as time has progressed and if i look here before lockdown and during lockdown again they jumped they uh, went from 1.54 to 2.30 so they got more environmentally friendly or at least so they perceive so however the jump between um environmentally friendly score 
during and after, there is no statistical difference there because they're relatively similar. Now, because I know that my scale went from uh, 1 is not environmentally friendly up to 10 being environmentally friendly, or is it up to 5, sorry, it was environmentally friendly, um, then I know that this has increased because the higher the number meant that they were more environmentally friendly. Of course, this could have gone the other way, so they might well have started off with a bigger number and then it would have decreased. And that's why you'll know if it's going up or down, because you can see here uh, which way they're going from before, during and after. It's as simple as that. So how do we write that then in terms of APA? So we know this statistical uh, significant difference, and we also know that it's between these two. So simply, we simply say a pairwise comparison was performed via SPSS statistics with a Bonferroni correction for multiple comparisons. Lockdown environmental scores were statistically significantly different between pre and post lockdown, and it was less than 0 0.005. Now here, because if you remember, if I just go back now and show you, we had 0 0.00, that doesn't mean it's 0 0.00, it basically just means it's 0 0.0005 or less than that. So we typically write that as less than 0 0.0005 rather than 0 0.05. And there was difference between pre and during, again, 0 0.005 there. So that's as simple as that, that's what you write. And then you can see there between the different time points, Again, this could be anything related to test scores. It could be um, weight, for example. It could be pain scores. Anything looking at um, at least three, uh, at least one group, sorry, over three different time points. You could have more there as well. A Friedman's rank test is a fantastic and easy way to go about looking at that data. So please do subscribe. Please do look at the other videos. Any other help? And thanks for your time.